Well, I guess it's good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. This is a you know another exciting day in in the in the journey of the Heinz Institute. We're you know kicking off the fourth iteration of the I own Innovation Challenge. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christoph Winkler, and the endowed professor, founding program director of the Heinz Institute. And the purpose of our uh, institute is really to provide opportunities for you know students across the campus. Uh, irrespective of the school with a, with, a, with a platform to explore what it means to have an entrepreneurial mindset. So over the years, uh, over the past three and a half years, uh, we've put different kinds of programs in place that really you know, connect students from different disciplines, introduce you to different tools, and ultimately you know, put you in a position where you feel empowered to really you know, continue on changing the world and really trying to find something that you, that you are interested in, but also that ultimately has impact uh, within, within our community. Um, in the spring semester, every every year we have done this. You know, we we launched this Iona Innovation Challenge, which really is our our sort of backbone of the spring semester. Really, you know, go through a series of milestones, giving our students the ability to connect, uh, you know, with a network, to put ideas forward, and ultimately also win some prize money. Lenny will talk about this in more detail, but I think it was important for me just to acknowledge the fact that, you know, this is a competition that is for everybody. Um, and really uh, gives us a great sort of uh, support uh, framework to you know, work with students and really um, working through the, the course of the spring semester. Um, uh, one thing I also wanna acknowledge here is that you know, while this is a competition, it's not just a submission system, it's also a community building exercise. So I think it's, it's really a great, uh, wonderful way to also connect uh, not only with other students or with the Heinz Institute, but also with our extensive mentor network. And the, this is something we've been very intentional about, uh, especially for the last year and a half. Uh, and we are very fortunate also to have Danny Pataki uh, as our entrepreneur in residence, uh, who is really helping us make those connections, you know, to the larger community to give you a chance to build your professional networks while also informing the ideas that you're working on. So and that's been really, I know, a wonderful uh, experience so far, and we'll try to expand on that work. And this is certainly going to be an important feature again of this year's uh, Iona Innovation Challenge. So you know, I think. Um, I'm going to stop here. I just want to pass this on over now to Danny. He will introduce our guest speaker, Jimmy DeSico. And I'm really excited about, about his keynote and input to really set the stage about what it means to be entrepreneurial and really listen, listening to his story. Uh, so without further ado, I want to you know, you know, pass it over to, to Danny and Jimmy. But I welcome everybody. And you know, I'm, I'm excited to kick this off today. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are listening later, you know, this is, this is going to be a great and exciting opportunity for us just to challenge ourselves and and you know create create exciting projects and businesses as we head forward so thanks everyone and you know have a great competition thanks christoph thanks for for kicking off with that energy and uh, positivity i think that you know jimmy will definitely highlight a lot of that and what he covers and the story um it definitely you know transitions from mindset to tool set as i like to say in your business, you know, everything that you bring to the table is a big, big part of your growth and your business's growth. And I think, you know, when I was reflecting on introducing Jimmy today, thankfully such a, you know, good friend and, and, you know, someone that I admire as a peer in how he's building, you know, an, an ecosystem and empire in many ways. Uh, Super Coffee is, you know, the number one independent coffee company in the country, um, if he's humble enough you know, he, cause he won't, he won't, uh, you know, mention that maybe specifically. So he's bringing a ton of insight in that process, but I wanted to give you all maybe a little background um, and I'll keep it very brief on how Jimmy might pick up how they launched Super Coffee and sort of brought it um, to the market and, and how it's grown. You know, Jimmy grew up in a very competitive family um, you know, in the Kingston, New York area and the Catskill Mountains. And, you know, I think it's important to reflect on how his entrepreneurial journey and where they're at today with his brothers started all the way back then. And in the industry and in entrepreneurship, that's called in, in sort of the research and, and the, um, you know, sort of the industry, this slow hunch of innovation, meaning it's, it's, it's years and years and years of how one idea could come to fruition. So when Jimmy was 12, right, and he's playing baseball and basketball and football with his two younger brothers, right, and Jake and Jordan, who founded 
and maybe he'll cover that. What I'm saying is Super Coffee started then. It started then. And they started running through brick walls then, whether that was running the football up the middle through the A gap or the B gap, if you're in the football that way, or whether that was driving you know, into the paint to lay it up or to block the shot, whatever it was, offense or defense. And carrying that through Kingston High School as the captain of the football team into class and beyond class and with his teammates and with his colleagues and peers, it at Colgate as um, as captain of that team as well and playing at the collegiate level, Division One, and also at the highest level of excellence in the classroom. What I want to just make clear, and as sort of known maybe perhaps a contribution of motivation today is that it's your venture, your idea, your company, your project initiative, however you're defining that, started yesterday. It started maybe a year ago. It started five to 10 years ago. And to me, whether you're a student, whether you're a professor, faculty, I want you to reflect on that, maybe as Jimmy sort of dives in more, and then how Lendy goes into the logistics of this, this competition. So Jimmy, I pass it to you to take it from there. Here's the torch, here's the mic, and I, you know, thanks for your time today. We really appreciate it. Danny, thank you, my friend. Thank you for the thoughtful introduction. The, the, the research is always well appreciated. Um, funny story, guys, where, where Danny lives now is just five doors down from the house that I grew up in. So uh, we actually met at a Forbes event in Detroit a couple of years ago, and we've become good friends ever since. Um, so I'm happy to be here. Before I get started, uh, we have a, a cool little video that I want to show to really set the stage and for um, the emotional appeal, the brand, the business, and just so you guys can see and feel what this is about. So Lendy, if you don't mind, let's, uh, let's cue that thing up. As we're getting it going, I'm going to start the story from 2021 and then take it all the way back to 20, 2015. So here we go. If you hadn't worked hard to be nice to people, if you just kind of delivered the product and left it there, do you think you would have made zero percent chance? This isn't just a story about me and my two brothers. Sure, we work hard, are nice to people, and after many, many tries, some Googling, and a whole bunch of nodes come out. Built a line of enhanced coffee sold across the country. Nah, this is a story about you. Over a million customers and growing every day. You were tired of sugary coffees and energy drinks, just like us. The guilt, the crashes, the artificial stuff. You demanded better. I mean, you love the taste, the flavor, who doesn't? But you wanted the taste with none of the bad and more of the good. Something that kept you going through the ups and downs of your days and made you feel great. Because when you feel great, not only do you do you radiate that energy to others. That's positive energy. One day I went to our convenience store on campus and I wanted to get an energy drink or just a bottled coffee. And the only thing I could get was loaded with artificial ingredients and sugars and just unhealthy stuff. So I was like, I'm not gonna drink this. So when we delivered a super coffee that tasted great, made you feel great and kept you going longer, you responded by buying our bottles. So many bottles and doing some pretty cool things. It gave us the most incredible joy we've ever felt and inspired us to share even more with you. Creamers, grounds, pods, espressos, and of course, new super coffee flavors. So now we're here, delicious, positive energy for every occasion. Your energy powering us, our energy for you. Just a few short years ago, we were delivering super coffee on a skateboard at Georgetown's campus, which is crazy to believe. Today, we have millions of customers. We've removed over 2 million pounds of sugar from America's diet in 2020 alone. Uh, and this wouldn't be possible without all of you who are watching this video, without all of you who tried super coffee, who drank super coffee, who made this a part of your lifestyle. Thank you so much. Uh, we are so grateful. You are inspiring. You are powerful. You motivate us every single day. Here to you. Cheers. Awesome. 
Thank you, Lendy. That was that was a good way to kick off, uh, guys. I mean, I can talk I can talk at you all day, but it, without the the visuals, without the the story, um, it, that that sort of brings it, it together a little bit, makes you guys feel something. So, like I said, I'm going to start from today, and because it's when I was in your shoes, I would have never thought that some of the stuff that we've achieved over the last four years or five years would be possible. So today. Super Coffee is the fastest growing food and beverage company in the country on the Inc. Magazine uh, 5000 list. So we were, we were number one on that list last year for food and beverage, and number 18 in the country overall. And on that list are companies like Tesla, Microsoft, big brands. We were number 18 on that list. And uh, to, to Danny's point, like I, this is uncomfortable for me talking about the business. But again, I want to paint a picture and it, it'll make sense for you. Um, We'll do $100 million in sales this year, which is unbelievable. Like me saying that number is, is, is crazy. In 2020, we signed a national distribution partnership with Anheuser-Busch. Uh, they're our distributor for the entire country. We raised a Series B round of funding. We brought on $36 million. That round was led by Jennifer Lopez and Alex Rodriguez. We've got to meet J-Lo and A-Rod. Like it, it, it was a dream come true. You know, I, growing up as a Yankees fan, I used to pretend to be Alex Rodriguez in the backyard. Uh, and now he's an, an owner in our business. In 2019, my brothers and I were, were nominated to the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Um, in 2020, we were EY's Entrepreneurs of the Year for New York City. Uh, in 2018, we got to pitch on Shark Tank, like you guys saw. Uh, in 2017, we, we did our first million dollars in sales, $1 million in 2017. And in 2016, my little brother Jordan dropped out of school to start Super Coffee. So that's not that long ago. And I, I want to start by saying when we when we were just getting started, we were in the same seat that you guys are all in today, you know, and, and uh, for us, we didn't know anything about food and beverage. Our mom worked at the YMCA. Our dad was a construction worker. You know, we did not know I, at, at Colgate, a liberal arts school. I studied philosophy. I had never heard the term startup before. Um, and, and the point that I'm trying to make is it's inside all of you, you know, you guys have, I'm no different than you all, you know, I drink the same water, I grew up right up the street from you guys. Uh, so I, I'm no different from any of you guys. I think one thing that is very intimidating and overwhelming is when you have an idea or you want to break into an industry, especially in, in an industry that's as big as coffee, you look up at some of these players like Starbucks and Duncan and uh, even like the, the smaller brand, the La Colombes of the world, the local coffee shops, and you're like, dang, we're never going to get there, right? How do these brands, these brands are larger than life. You know, they, these brands are, are everywhere. They're on every planet in every city on every, every country. It's crazy. Um, but I, I think when you look up at the top of that mountain, the only way you get there is one step at a time. And, and Danny and I talk about moving small stones, like the way you move a mountain is, is one stone at a time. And for us, I mean, we just got started in, in, in the beginning we knew that there was a void in the industry for, for bottled coffee. Like the, the only thing that was available to us, you saw my bro brother Jordan say it in the industry or in that video, the only thing that was available to us was coffee and energy drinks that were loaded with sugar, unhealthy ingredients, stuff that didn't make us feel good, tasted good. You know, that's why it sells so much, but it wasn't good for us. And we didn't want to put that into our bodies because it didn't give us energy. So Jordan started brewing his own coffee with protein, healthy fats from coconut oil, zero sugar, tasted good. He was like, guys, this is a void that nobody's filling. I can't be a full-time student athlete and make this make this dream come to life. You know, so I have to drop out of school to uh, to get started. So Jake and I joined him, and in in 2016, like I said, we didn't know what we were doing. So we we showed up to one store. It was a Whole Foods market in Washington D.C. Our middle brother Jake was finishing his uh, his senior year at Georgetown. So we walk into the store with a bottle of, of super coffee that Jordan made in the blender that morning. We found the store manager, the grocery manager. He was on his hands and knees stacking tomato sauce. And we said, excuse me, sir, can we, we, can we introduce ourselves? We're, we're the DeSeco brothers. We right down the road here at Georgetown and, and we're the creators of Super Coffee. You guys don't sell this yet. He's like, oh, never heard of it. What's this? Tried it. He's like, pretty good. I don't, don't carry anything like it. He's like, if you guys promise to get some of your friends from Georgetown to come shop at my store, we'll give you guys a chance. So just like that, we got into one store and that's the only store we had. So we were determined. We said, we're going to make this store the best store, the best story we can possibly make. So we didn't, we, we, that, that day we made the first delivery. We poured samples for four hours until we sold every single bottle. We broke that store's weekly sales record in the first four hours. And then we did it every single day that week. We went home, we made more product in the blender. We came back the next day. 
four days in a row, five days in a row. We did it for a full week. Uh, and that's how it went for a month, just in this one store. It was the only store we had. So you, you better believe we were going to take care of it. Uh, and then what we did was like, I think we're ready. I think we're ready to grow. You know, we're, we're, we're breaking records in the store every single day. So we took that sales data to the Whole Foods down the street, about a mile away. And we said, hey, your buddies up, up the street, they're, they're kicking your butt. You know, we're, they sell super coffee. You guys don't have it yet. So then we did the same playbook at that store. And we poured samples until we broke that store's sales record. And that's how it went for the first year. Because in, in, in the food and beverage industry, the barrier truly is, I mean, stores don't carry you unless you have a distributor. Distributors don't carry you unless you have stores. So how do you get, how do you get started? We were like, you know what? We're going to make our own deliveries. You know, we don't need a distributor. And then that first year we got into 20 stores in the DC area, making our own deliveries, uh, learning along the way, understanding the language of the store, understanding how to do invoices, how to make deliveries at the back of the store, how to stock shelves, who's responsible for ordering. We've really learned the industry from the ground up. And, and that's because we had to, you know, we didn't know anything about this. Uh, and at the end of that first year, we found a local distributor making a delivery in Whole Foods and that, that guy ended up investing. He was one of our first investors and he took over. But finally, we had a, a big enough book of business where it made sense for him to take that over. Uh, so every step of the way, like we didn't, we didn't know how we were going to solve the problem of getting a distributor. Right. We, we just started distributing by ourselves. And naturally, that problem sorted itself out because we, we controlled what we could control. We created a book of business that was valuable to somebody else. Uh, and then from that, we got, a, we got all this free time, you know, we weren't waking up at 4am to make deliveries anymore. We had a distributor. So we went out, we raised money, we, we got into a better manufacturing facility because we could support more volume. Uh, we, we scaled from DC to Baltimore to Philadelphia to New York City, all in like 2017, um, 2018 was Shark Tank. So we were able to raise more money from that. And uh, slowly the, the business kept kept growing, you know, and there was bumps along the way. I don't want to make it sound like it was easy. Uh, but I, I think the, the key lesson here is those confused little kids in, in 2016, not knowing anything about beverage are the same guys that are running the company today, you know, and, and we are no different than you guys. So I think the, the doubts that you feel in yourselves every single day, I still feel them today. You know, I'm extremely insecure. Like I, I, I don't trust myself. I, 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 I'm like, how the hell are we going to do this? How are we going to get bigger? Uh, but like I said at the beginning, looking back on, on 2016, I never would have thought we'd, been, we'd be where we are at today. So I guess my, my advice to you guys, and the one thing I'd tell my 19-year-old self or my 22-year-old self is, dude, you got this. The people at the top are no different than you. You know, that I, I promise you guys, there's nothing special about the people who run the, the biggest companies in the world, the people who run the, the favorite brands that you buy every single day. They're normal people. Uh, just like you guys. So I think no matter what you want to do in your life, if you want to start a company, if you want to be a teacher, if you want to be a professor, if you want to be a social worker, you definitely have what it takes. Let, let my brothers and I be living proof. Uh, we grew up right where you grew up. And, and uh, I mean, the, the, the story here is, is very similar to yours. So I wanted to keep that brief. Uh, and I definitely want to open it up for questions. I, I, I get the most out of this when, uh, when we turn this into a conversation. So thank you guys for listening to that. Thank you, Jimmy. And now we're opening the floor for questions. And if you don't want to open up your mics, you could put it in the chat room and I will be reading it to Jimmy. So please do that um, now. Go ahead, Bert. Hey, so um, I, I thought it was interesting when you uh, brought that um, distributor on board as an investor. I was just kind of curious about how, um, how did that alleviate some of the growing pains, obviously, besides the obvious point of, you know, the mass distribution, um, like, did he, did he offer anything else besides, um, you know, distribution and financing was it kind of like, he kind of gave you some like tips on where to go next, like with different products and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, the way I see it, so we all know what influencers are on social media, right? Influencers are people you pay to endorse products. You have mega influencers like Jennifer Lopez and you have micro influencers like fitness folks that some of us follow. Uh, what I like to say about influencers is influencers influence other influencers. So with that distributor, it wasn't, he wasn't just one guy in a vacuum. His best friend from college was Boomer Esiason, who was once upon a time the NFL MVP. He introduces us to Boomer. Boomer ends up investing in our business. One of Boomer's best friends is Kevin Plank from Under Armour. Under Armour quickly became a customer. You know, so I, I, I think to that point, it's a, it's a great lesson here on networking and relationships. 
don't judge a book by its cover, right? It don't take somebody for what they're worth, especially if, if you're, as you're networking to, to get a job or if you're interviewing, let's say you want to become a doctor. If, if you meet a lawyer who graduated from Iona at first glance, it's like, this guy can't help me or this woman can't help me. She's a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. That lawyer's best friend might be a doctor who's hiring, right? So I think treat people not as a means to an end, but as an end in themselves, because they're, they're truly going to be able to, to help you and connect you. Uh, it's a great question about a distributor and our, our entire network blossomed from that one, that one relationship. Thanks. Yeah. Good question. Any other questions? Feel free to chat. Um, I have one. <laughs> sure, Ree. Um, how are some ways that you dealt with like people not seeing like your vision for um, Super Coffee? Uh, all right, I'm gonna give this one to you straight as straight as I can. Can I add uh, one more thing too? Yeah, go. And then what kind of made you like strive to overcome that and like still do it? Yeah. So those two good questions. Those are both both connected. The, here's the here's the thing, and and I, I mean some of you may have figured this out already. Is nobody cares, right? Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares what you're working on. The most important person in everybody's life is themselves, you know. And and for us, we were really lucky to find people along the way who sort of put their arm around us. But even that was just advice for a 30 minute phone call or a 10 minute phone call, that type of thing. Uh, most people said no. And I think once we accepted that nobody's going to help us do this in a meaningful way, like nobody's going to build this business for us, our mentality was like, put the team on our backs. You know, we got this no matter how hard it is, we're going to figure this out. We're going to wake up earlier than other people. We're going to go to bed later than other people. You know, we're just going to work harder. And thankfully, we chose an industry. It's a simple industry. Uh, it's just not an easy one. You know, it's very physical. You got to show up. The, the brand who sells the most product is the brand who stocks the most shelves. You know, it's why Coke and Pepsi are so big. So I, I think the, the second part of that is um, why, why, did, why did we keep going when other people didn't care? Uh, it can't be, you can't be motivated just for money. You can't be motivated just for, for financials. You have to believe in what you're doing. Uh, over the last five years, since we sold our first bottle, we've removed 4 million pounds of sugar from America's diet, you know, and, and we've recognized the impact that has on individuals and, and people with diabetes or metabolic, metabolic disorders. So, and frankly, like selfishly and honestly, it's like, if we execute our, our business, well, my brothers and I will make a lot of money someday, you know? So like, that's a kicker, but that's not the, that's not the main reason we're doing this. So I think find something that you're passionate about, do it in service of other people, solving a problem for yourselves that you can then share that solution with others. Uh, but once you, you, you got to accept like, nobody's going to help you. Any help that you get is going to be just icing on the cake. You know, that's going to be an added benefit, but assume like, once you have the mindset that like, dang, I'm on this road by myself, I think you become a lot more independent and a lot more productive. Thank you. I have like a question right here. Yeah. Um, hey, Jimmy, thank you for um, your presentation. But my question is, you know, you kept mentioning your brothers. How was that like? working with your brothers, uh, you know, going into business with your brothers, making tough decisions with your brothers. So yeah. Yeah, great question. So um, for, for us, I think it's the biggest blessing. You know, I think it all depends on the relationships you have with your siblings, but we're super close in age. I'm 28, Jake's 27, Jordan's 25. Uh, we all have a similar work ethic. Both of our parents played college sports, like Danny said. Uh, so we came from this background where we wanted to compete, we wanted to win. Growing up as athletes, we competed against each other in the backyard, but now today we're on the same team. And, and I think, I mean, it's the biggest blessing in the world to work with people. I mean, we have 25 years of trust built up with each other, you know, and even today it, we live with each other, we work with each other, we work out together, we go on vacations together, like we're always together. And, and uh, the, what we got better at is uh, communicating, you know, like we have to hold each other accountable. And, and uh, I think if ego ever gets involved, we have to call each other out for that. Um, but I, I wouldn't change a thing. I couldn't imagine doing this with anybody other than my brothers. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Got one more question that came in through the chat. Um, it says, I'm sure others may be wondering, how did you get to Shark Tank and how did that experience help you? Awesome. Cool. So, uh, I truly believe in creating your own luck, right? And nobody got lucky sitting at home on the couch and uh, people, uh, as that first year, while we were pouring samples in grocery stores, um, people would always ask us, have you guys gone on shark tank? Three brothers starting this coffee company is great shark tank story. 
40,000 companies apply for Shark Tank every year and only 100 people get to go film. So I was like, no, we didn't apply to Shark Tank. Like that's like buying a lottery ticket. You know, we're building a business here. We're not going to apply to Shark Tank. And then one day it was, it was April, 2017. I was just scrolling through LinkedIn. I saw a second degree connection of mine comment on a third degree connections post saying, hey, we're looking for brands to go on Shark Tank. I just met a producer at this event. Let me know if you're interested. Had nothing to do with me, had nothing to do with Super Coffee. I, I sent this guy a DM. I said, hey, we're, we're, here's Super Coffee. Good to meet you. Would love to, would love a connection. Because if we could skip that application process of 40,000, I was interested in that. So the next day we're on, a, we're on a phone call with this producer. He's like, look guys, love the story. I think you have a good shot. Uh, you still got to apply, but basically we're going to put your application to the top of the pile. So uh, I think we got lucky there, but we also put ourselves in a position to get lucky. Awesome. Jim, you had a question? Uh, I just had a question. You were in the kitchen, you were making up a batch for a couple of stores. How did you ramp up from there to, uh, to such wide distribution, the ability to give Anheuser-Busch that much product? How did you ensure quality, et cetera? We, we, uh, great question. We just bought more blenders. No, I, I, I wish it was, that was the case. We, uh, we, it, it was an iterative, iterative process. You know, like we did not, um, we weren't ready to get to, to where we're at today back then. So basically once it was the same deal with that distributor, we built up a book of business that eventually got too big for the three of us to make product by ourselves, to distribute by ourselves. So we got into a local like culinary kitchen that had a, a production line in that video that played, you saw like products swashing around a big hundred gallon vat. That was, that was the first production facility that we were in. And then kept, kept grinding, kept adding more stores, got into a second production facility in the first year. Same thing, kept grinding, got into more stores, and then got into a third production facility. And we were really lucky that in the end of that first year, one of our advisors introduced us to the facility that we're at today. We were struggling to barely meet minimum run sizes back then. But today we're one of this, this manufacturer's largest clients. Uh, and so far there hasn't been any capacity issues. No quality issues? No, they're the best in the business. They produce for Muscle Milk and Nestle and, and Shore. They're, they're really a, a state-of-the-art facility. So we were lucky to get them when we did. Uh, and anything like FDA or SQF, like all of the certifications are handled by this facility. So we don't have to deal with that. Granted, the, the, the downside, because we use a contract manufacturer and we don't own our money. own facility, it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've raised- Thank you. Thank yeah, you. you. Well it. done. Well Thank done. You. Thank you, Mr. Hines. So I'm going to just take this opportunity for this last question as we move uh, sort of forward. Um, but I also wanted to welcome Jim and Anne-Marie Hines to the IIC this year. Um, and I'll get back to them um, shortly after this question. But the next question is, how did you come up with the initial funding at the very start of your business? Yeah, so uh, at first, like I mentioned, we didn't come, come from any money, uh, but we have my, my dad's sister, and her partner uh, heard Jordan's story, heard his passion for it, and Jordan sort of sold them on this vision. And they didn't have any kids, so they, they have a, a decent savings built up. And they each put in $15,000 for us to get started. And that was enough for us to buy the bottles, to rent a delivery truck, and, and to, to get product on the shelf. Every time we raised money, we had a plan for what we were going to do with that money, how much product we'd sell, what, who, what any people we we're going to hire, what marketing was going to be. And we always delivered on that plan. So when we went back to our investors, say a couple months later, we, we could say something like, hey, we, uh, we raised $30,000 a couple months ago. We turned it into 100,000 in sales. Now, if you give us 500,000, we'll turn it into 2 million, right? And, and uh, thankfully for us, I mean, we, we always delivered on, on some, some level of what we said we would do. And, and that really allowed us to build up credibility uh, and a after that first investment from our aunts, like we just kept running into people like that distributor. Uh, we ran into a lawyer from Georgetown who's, he had some wealthy clients who wanted to invest in us. Uh, so we got, we really put ourselves out there and put ourselves in a position to get lucky. Thank you, Jimmy. This has, this has been great, but I want to sum up a couple of points that I've jotted down um, from your talk. You know, you started where we're all the same you know, the students, you sort of, they could achieve whatever they want. So thank you for that. Um, other points were the importance of networking and we strive to have our students really network with our community. Um, working hard, just working hard is, is, is huge and believing in what you're doing, kind of believing in your why is important. Um, the team, 
building trust in that team, you are fortunate with brothers, but I think that also translates with um, having a team that you trust to really work effectively. And I think um, the last point that you just made answering this question was, you know, keeping your word is important, right? Because people start believing in you and like, you're gonna come through. So thank you for that. I thank you for this amazing talk. As we move out to the second part of um, our session, you could stay, you're welcome to stay to continue to listen to everything we have to say. But now I wanna give a moment to Jim and Anne-Marie, sort of everything is possible in what we do because of Jim and Anne-Marie. So when they're around, we want a little shout out and we want to hear a little from them. So please give some inspiring words to some of our students this, this semester. I would echo a lot of the things that Jimmy said with regards to uh, the most important person involved in your life is yourself. And you've got to leverage your abilities, your credibility, your belief in yourself. Um, you know, this inspiration, which certainly they had, and perspiration, which he referred to. You got to work hard. I, I, I've had a good bit of success and I, I never did it easily. It was always hard. It was always hard work spend a lot of time away from the loved ones, et cetera. But pick a target. Uh, I'm gonna disagree on one thing. I kind of did it for money too, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, you gotta start with the, uh, the desire to do something, uh, prove yourself and prove what you, what prove your, prove the thing that you've thought of can be successful, can be good. Uh, you gotta take pride in the fact that what you thought of worked and sold and became uh, important and uh, do it with people you trust, you like. As he said, you don't have to have a brother or sister, but occasionally you can find some people you like and trust. And to keep yourself out there looking for uh, I, I, another thing, at a very young age, you've learned something well. Everyone you meet is a, is a friend, a potential friend, and a potential friend can turn into a potential source of assistance, guidance, investment, etc. So I, uh, I just really echoing a lot of the things Jimmy said. And in spades, when you get bigger and you get out there and you have to deal with a lot of people trying to pull on your ear and pull you in different directions, which you're about to enter, I'm sure. <laughs> Anne-Marie? Yeah, I, I just wanna say, I, I never was fortunate enough to be, or perhaps never had the drive to be an entrepreneur, but I certainly have seen a lot of the things that Jim and some of our friends have gone through and I have to say, the one thing that I got from, um, from Jimmy's just talk just now is you really have to have a dream and you really have to have enough gumption to believe in yourself and whatever you think your dream is going to, wherever it's going to take you. And you have to follow through. And it sounds like that's what he and his brothers are doing. So it sounds like he's got one of the main components of actually being a success. And I think that's the one thing that even if you aren't starting a business, but it's the one thing that you can learn from being involved in some type of entrepreneurial or innovation experience at college is that, you know, there are things that you can do wherever you are and you just have to believe that what you, what you want to do, you can succeed at. So it was great to hear. Awesome. Thank you, Jim and Anne-Marie. So Jimmy, thank you again. Any final words before I move on? No, thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Jim and Anne Marie, thank you for making this possible. Danny, the team, thank you guys. And, and just remember to believe in yourselves. You got this. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. All right. So the Iona Innovation Challenge is all what we're here for. This is our fourth year, and we are beyond excited to be able to bring it again to all of you. And with a little bit of changes, this time around, but reality is why do we do this? Why should you participate as a student in the Iona Innovation Challenge? Really take action, learning new skills, collaborate, meet with mentor and network and have the ability to present, right? To present your ideas, to get feedback on those ideas are important. Who's available to eligible to participate? Any student at Iona. So you could be undergrad, graduate student, you could participate as an individual, you could participate as a team. As long as you submit one idea to the IIC, which is Iona Innovation Challenge, you can participate. We're trying to make it simple here. Um, in terms of the themes for your idea, anything goes. Your idea is valid, right? 
It could be social entrepreneurship. It could be media ventures, social networking, web app, technology. Um, it's not in this list, but you know, an occupational therapy um, idea, for example business technology, service innovation, e-commerce. There's so many options out there. It's really what you want to do, how you want to solve problems, what is your why, and how that translates into an idea and a venture is what we're looking for. We have an opportunity to win big like every year. It's up to $6,000 in cash price. So there's first, second, and third place. Fan favorite, which is always a fun one and additional awards depending how the judges see the competition, right? And this year we are glad to announce the opportunity to win, to win a three week virtual bootcamp via the um, entrepreneur, sorry, the European Innovation Academy, we call it EIA. Um, this opportunity came about from a study abroad program that we used to have that was physical for the last two years. Some of our students went to Italy and to Portugal, but um, this year we're providing that opportunity through um, this virtual channel or online. And I'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, and if you guys are having questions on the chat, I'll go back to it in a second. Um, so what is EIA? Why is the European Innovation Academy and why is it an amazing opportunity as a prize as well? So. It's really a study abroad program, but it's three week boot camp, and it's happening this year, July 2nd to the 23rd. Um, it's a boot camp that you could take really this idea that you work through the competition, right? And really launch it. And not only launch it via, you know, your local, local channels, but you build a national, not a national, a, a international network of people. Because to this, EIA, there's people from all over the world. Um, and through some of these info sessions that we have, you could find out sort of kind of some of the experience of some of the students that attended this before and how immersive it is and transformative it is throughout the entire process. So it's like actually a very great price to, to win at the end of all this. And you also have the ability to earn three transferable credits through this process. So not only do you have three week of immersive learning, but then you sort of could put it into your, back to your Iona, Innovate, Iona education with three credits. And I'll get to all the questions towards the end. So what is the competition process, right? It's a two month process where student form teams propose idea, connect with mentors and submit two milestones to utilize resources and provi provided by the Heinz Institute. So this year we were very strategic about the milestones and sort of the spacing between the milestones and the resources that we're providing around the milestones really for that community building piece, allowing the student to really have more time to engage with mentor feedback and really learn how to massage their business ideas. So the milestones themselves, it's a one minute pitch. That's kind of your submission. So by that day, which is March 14th, so you all have a month to really prepare a one minute video talking about your idea. Um, and then sort of the last milestone, which is the second milestone is a combination of a one page executive summary and a 10 slide pitch deck. And that's due in April 11th, another month for that. And in between all this time from today, because next week we start with workshops, co-working, mentorship, we start with all of it. Um, and you'll start hearing from us starting Monday. Um, so you will be immersed in this process of mentorship, workshops, and really working on this idea if this is what you want to do. So how do you, you know, in terms to move forward, make sure you sign up at the IONA startup tree. And this is where all the submissions go through. Create a profile because our mentors are all there. They are there waiting for you and, and their hours and all that stuff is there. We suggest that you create a project page and visit the IONA Innovation Challenge page overall. 
within Startup Tree so you could see sort of the updates that are coming up. This year, we are creating sort of a cohort of students who are participating through um, our Slack channel to make sure that you guys are informed that that community is being built on an everyday basis that you guys have access to us as, as you need as well as to mentors. So then to officially participate is that first milestone, which is a one minute video. So I'll leave this on the screen for time being. This is for an information packet. If you take a picture of this, you could get all of our documents, all of the workshops that are coming up about the competition. So I'll leave this up for a couple of minutes. And before I move on and open to questions, um, please take a picture of this. And now I will open it to question. And feel free to use the, the, the chat for questions, raise your hand and I'll see your hand once I stop sharing, but I don't wanna stop sharing yet. Um, and I like to see faces when I'm answering questions. So I will take this off and then put it back on in a second. All righty. So questions, anybody? Um, what has to be included in the video for the first submission? So the video, in terms of the look and feel of the video itself, it could be really whatever you want, but you need to be able to communicate your idea with us, right? We need to understand what that idea is. Um, and that's really the essence of the video. So what's your idea, perhaps if you already have, like who could be using this idea, what's it's useful and that kind of stuff. And we could discuss it more in details because different ideas have different forms of videos and I'm seeing different questions. So is that good enough, Rhi? Perfect, thank you. No problem. So I see a question, how many people in a group? That's really determined by you. Um, you also don't want a huge group. You don't want a seven people group, then, then you can't navigate of who's doing what, right? But you do want a, a team that it's able to complement each other. And I think that's extremely important because the things that you may lack personally in terms of skills, another person might have that skill. So sometimes having a, a well-balanced team is important, but we don't put really limitations. We don't suggest a, a seven person team but um, we do suggest having some sort of decent team, three to five. Um, the next question is, does this need to be in groups or can it be individual? Again, it could be either or, it's up to you. Maybe it's just your idea and as you go through the process, you do meet people that are interested in your idea and that and you guys become team members. Another question is, I want to participate but don't have an idea yet. How do I go about that? I think um, getting sort of in our channel and, and, and networking because somebody might have a team, might have an idea with no team, right? And that person is looking for a teammate. So you might be able to um, collaborate with that person. Another place that you could sort of start thinking about ideas, we have a workshop called an ideation workshop coming up next week, which sort of could help you through that process of coming up with an idea. So those, these are options that you could use. And if you scanned, everything is there. If you scan a QR code. Um, what does the executive summary consist of? It's sort of a detailed one pager um, that talks about your business um, in, in more detail. Uh, and all the sort of the specifics are also in that info package. But in essence, it's really giving a snippet to whoever reads it of that idea and why is it important. Um, what does the final pitch event look like? Huh, since Jimmy talked about the Shark Tank, let's, let's reference to that, right? You have a couple of judges in front of you. In our case, we also have an audience. Um, last year, we had the opportunity to do it via Zoom because of COVID, um, but in previous year, we actually all had person and it's it's a well, very well attended event um, but really you're pitching your idea to a group of judges who then have questions about your idea 
whether it's financial questions, whether it's market questions, um, whatever they might think that you're missing or they didn't understand. So, you know, they're not as brutal as Shark Tank by no mean. I think our, our judges are, are nice and understanding. Um, and they won't say to you, I'm out. That's not what they're gonna say to you, but it's an opportunity really to practice that skill, to present your idea, to put sort of in words what you're thinking and what your idea and, and, and venture is gonna, what problem it's gonna solve. Um, the Slack channel, oh, sorry, is that for me? Jar, Jar had a comment, sorry. And if you want to know a little bit about judges, we do have two judges in the room, which is Jim and Anne-Marie, who are great judges. We also have mentors in the room. As I scan the Zoom, we have Tom. I'm just looking through my screen. If I don't mention you, please don't feel offended. We have Danny. I was already missing Danny. Um, it's just, I'm just scanning through, through my screen. We have Scott. So yeah, so we have already our mentors are really engaged in what we do. Our judges are really engaged in what we do. Bert said we have Andrew in the room as well. Thank you, Bert. Um, so yeah, so this is a community building also exercise that we like to have and we are your community. You are our community. So this is very important to us. Anything else? Any other questions? Christoph, do you want to say something as I drink some water? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna <laughs> say that. that. No, I, 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 I really appreciate Lindy for walking us through this and really also making the connections between what Jimmy has said and also thanks to Jim and Amore for offering some, some you know, uh, inspiring remarks. It's always great to have you part of this. It's so important and so wonderful to, to see you at these, at these kinds of events uh, because, you know, it's not just quote unquote your name that's attached to the to the competition. It's also your energy and all that the tremendous amount of support that you offer to us to even be in a position to give these opportunities to all of our students. So I really want to uh, thank thank you and thank everybody who really took the time today to learn more about this. Um, another thing about networking is go out and, and talk to your, also your, although it's a competition, but it's, it's we're only as good as the, as the community. So also tell other students about the competition because not everybody was able to make it today. Uh, and also big thanks to our mentors because uh, this has been really a big focus of us in the last year to really be intentional about how we can connect our students to our larger community of, of you know, alumni and, and people in the, in the local business and, and larger community and that's been such a rewarding experience so the most scary thing about entrepreneurship is is you know taking that first step and i think being here is a first uh um sort of inch towards that the journey uh and you know if you have ideas we're here to uh help you if you don't have ideas we're here to help you and ultimately you know mark that first deadline and, and get that first minute pitch in or the one minute pitch in and then we're off to a good start and we're excited to be working with you this semester so um, good luck to all the um, to all the students and and thank you to all the mentors and everybody else involved. And as my team keeps on reminding me, the Heinz Institute overall, which I have most of the team here, is here to support you. So if you can't get in contact with a mentor, if you have a quick question, we're here to support you. Reach out to us. Um, we're an email away. Sometimes we're in person, like some of our team members, a phone call away reach out, make sure to check out all the events, including the workshops. You know, we had some ideation questions and that kind of stuff. I think it's important for you to go through the process. Um, we have resources like that to attend. Jarlene also shared sort of a link of our events, right, Jar? That's what it was. Be on the lookout for the Slack invitation. After today, you will be invited to join our group chat um, or Slack channel. Um, and there you'll be able to connect with everyone else who's also participating in the competition or is even thinking about it. This is not to say that you're officially committed, but it's just you know a, a space for you to ask questions, connect with us, um, because we're literally here to guide you every step of the way. So um, keep a lookout for that uh, in your emails. And um, yeah, I look forward to connecting with you all. Yeah. Yes. And the big thanks to the team, Lindy, Jolene, Marisol, Danny, you know, NJ. So, you know, uh, everybody, everybody, Lily, Ivan. So, you know, it, it's really, uh, it's really a group effort. So thank you all.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone.